Welcome to week four. On our agenda for today, uh, name this unicorn or name that unicorn. Uh, why? What the heck? Uh, I'm also going to discuss the week, re week three results, including the results from mini test number one, uh, tips from students, and going forward. All right, hold on a second. Guinness wants to join. All right, only for this intro video would I let uh, the little French bulldog maybe uh, sniff into the microphone, but anyways, I think it adds to something. Okay. So name that unicorn. Unfortunately, we didn't get any engagement on the discussion board this week, but that's okay. You had a bunch of things to prepare for. I do want to share though why I started off uh, one of my classes with this. And it goes back to why we start off each week with uh, an intro video. It's because our brain, despite us wanting it to, you know, turn on like a vehicle um, and go from zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, it takes some time. So as Andrew Huberman, the micro, uh, pardon me, um, yes, I believe microbiologist, oh, sorry, neurobiologist uh, from Stanford says, you know, our brain works best in 90 minute chunks and it doesn't like go from zero to a hundred. We really got to ease into it. And by the way, that might be 90 minutes for some, it might be 80 minutes for others, it might be a hundred minutes for others, but just in general, about 90 minutes uh, with an on-ramp and our last 10 minutes might not look like uh, the middle 30 minutes. So naming that unicorn is a way to also, it's like a brainstorming exercise. No matter how tired you are, no matter how enthused you are for accounting, you can always look at a picture and you can always name it. Name that unicorn, uh, you know, <laughs> gallop, uh, tail horse, <laughs> you can look at it uh, phonetically. You can say, what's your favorite um, animal growing up? You can look outside and be like, it's tree horse. Like, I, you can be as silly as you want. There's no wrong answer. Also, there's no right answer. So it takes the pressure off. Whenever you sit down, um, I, would, uh, I would just encourage you. When we're learning, it's not, there's the learning zone and then there's the performing zone. When you're learning, Focus on the learning, try, repeated exposure, effort. And then sometimes you'll be performing, like in mini test number two, and you'll be in the performing zone. And so you'll wanna maximize for different items in your learning zone as you'll be doing in your performing zone. So sometimes mid-semester, when it's particularly like, uh, you know, a more difficult on-ramp when the especially midwinter when it feels like there's more uh, non-sun than there is sun, I definitely do like to just focus on recentering ourselves and saying, what are we doing here? Name that unicorn, because if we can name the unicorn, then we can name some debits, we need name some credits, and we can start, you know, getting into everything. All right. So I want to talk a bit about our results from this week. Okay, goodness. <laughs> um, Let's first look at our adaptive assignment number one. And so similar to past weeks, um, we, let's see. So similar to past weeks, I guess I'll just delete this. Okay. Um, we have most people um, starting it, 163 this week. I think in previous weeks it was around 170. And most of the people that started it got over 80 and therefore were bumped up to 100. Um, one person, one or two people uh, were midway through, and then a small handful um, started but did not attain 50%. So do your best to keep up on these um, as the term goes on, but do remember you do get to drop your lowest two. These are awesome studying, really an awesome accompaniment, accompaniment? oh pardon me, oh, uh, they are great company to preparing your to completing your readings and your mini lecture video watchings, as well as after the deadline, you can also do them as much as you'd like to prepare for the mini test or your final exam, perhaps as a refresher. For example, uh, the final exam is comprehensive, so doing chapters one, two, and three uh, a week or two before the final exam might be a good way to get confidence that if something in those chapters comes up, you've seen it recently. All right, so now looking at our mini test. Here are the results. Again, I share these not for you to feel better or worse about your performance, but for transparency as well as 
um, a way to kind of let you see what your performance was relative to your peers for information purposes. Again, please do not use this to make yourself feel better or worse about your performance. Our average was just over 88%. Uh, we had a number of people score at 100% and our lowest grade was 26%. You will see that um, the curve is, is not a bell curve, but rather it is uh, like half the bell curve uh, with a large amount of high concentration towards here. What this could indicate to educators looking at this curve would be that this test was too easy because um, there was a higher number of people that scored well uh, and a tail here, whereas what educators or you know statisticians like to see is a bell curve. I will say um, that we make all of our mini tests um, prior to the start of the term. So it's not like this test was quote, too easy and then the next one will be more difficult. No, uh, as the semester progresses, the material tends to compound um, and it tends to build on previous chapters. Uh, so for that purpose, sometimes students don't keep on top of the materials. And so the material will feel like it's more difficult just because it does now include some prerequisite or probably pre-chapter knowledge. So we don't make the test any more difficult, but students will often say they feel or appear to be more difficult. Plus, you probably just keep having more things due uh, and more things to balance kind of as the term goes on. So we don't change anything based on these results and we um, don't make anything more difficult, though it might appear. So I also do want to recognize that a number of people weren't successful on passing this um, test, as well as I received a few emails from students that were um, around here in the bottom 50% of results that said that they weren't um, that they weren't happy with their performance. And so to that, I, I remind you, like it's a learning process. For some of you, for many of you, this might be your first university test. So whether it's your first university test or your 40th or 400th, uh, be kind to yourself. This course was also designed for life. So if life happens, you know, and life can include, you know, um, two or three people mentioned that they didn't see part of a question. That's life. It happens. It's, and like, it's okay. No blame, no shame. And I, and I get that it's frustrating. Um, I have, <laughs> I've done a decent amount of schooling and if whatever mistake you've made, know that I've made it too. Right. And hopefully I've only made it once because I try to never make the same mistake more than once. Um, I will be kind to myself as much as possible the first time and I will learn from it because I like right answers and I love wrong ones and I <sighs> frustrated when I make a mistake, but I'll try never to make the same mistake twice. So the good news is the lowest mini test is dropped. So this might be your lowest mini test regardless of where you are on the spectrum. And I just say, be kind to yourself. So we have a number of really generous students. After Friday at 5 p.m., I emailed your peers and ask a few of the very tippity top performers to email me back a few tips that they would share uh, with their fellow, fellow classmates. So if you didn't meet your definition of success, maybe you can learn from a few tips from actual students in this course. And so here's what they said. One said, I carved out practice time into their brain and use a little memory trick to remember the orders in which to list assets versus revenues. And they said that the format of the test helped because it was like the practice test. So do the practice test. And the student says that they hadn't seen this material before. They didn't take accounting or anything in a prerequisite course. And so that um, fortunately that their, their way of studying helped prepare them for success here. So thank you. Another student said um, that they studied. They studied a lot. And when they were studying, they went over definitions and equations and concepts. And anytime they weren't sure, they flagged it and they went over things. Um, and by going over things like this, that when they were doing the tests and they were struggling with them, because they familiar, familiarized themselves with the material enough, um, they knew how to approach the questions. And they made sure to look over the instructions and the mini test, and there's an exclamation point. 
Okay, I'm going to continue reading from their point of view. To ensure I used my time wisely, I made sure not to spend too much time on multiple choice questions as I knew harder questions would follow after that. And since I knew how to solve the multiple choice questions, but um, those vary with tests. And so whenever I needed more time in those particular questions than I did with the test, I could go back. Um, they don't have any more advice, but they just said try your best and ensure that you look over the expectations and requirements of the test. Okay, so now two people have said to look at requirements and attempt mini test. So not all um, sets, um, attempt um, practice mini tests. So not all mini tests will have a practice, but the ones that you do, you should absolutely review and all of them will have um, requirements or instructions. So you'll want to check those out. Okay, let's see advice from, I have two more students. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, pardon me. And then one that's gotten this morning. Hi, in, or, uh, oh no, sorry, two more. What, uh, so to answer the questions I sent, what did you do to prepare for the mini test? Uh, they reviewed all lecture slide material and practice problems and tutorial session problems listed from chapter one and two listed in the syllabus. Then I asked, what did you um, do to write or allocate your time during the test? And they said, for this mini test, I started and looked at multiple choice problems. And if I knew the answer, I checked what I believed was right. And I hit save for later as I can always come back to that last minute. And the response is not complex. It's simply a checkbox. They then spent most of the time, I then spent most of my time on the longer problems, making the financial statements. I would say it's probably best to spend the most time on the most complex problems as normally they're worth more and we can come back to the multiple choice question later. Okay, so strategic writing, um, quick MCQs and save for later, leave long for rest of the test. Okay, and this tracks with what I saw in the results as well. So I saw in the results a number of students, um, a meaningful amount, not, a, not the majority, but a meaningful amount did not um, complete question number nine. So yeah, leave long, um, long time, leave enough time, leave long time, leave enough time for the rest of the test after the MCQs. Okay, what else? Um, I would say it's probably best to spend the most time on the complex problems as they're normally worth more. Um, and then you can always come back to the MCQs and at worst you can guess and still have a one in four chance that you could get the right answer. Yeah, I love that. And then I asked any advice you have for a friend. And this person said, the advice I give is to be attentive in tutorials, review the tutorial solutions after and make sure you understand the material. If you unsure about the certain topics of the practice, if you are uncertain about topics, may look like the practice problems are where there are many that are very similar to what we did in tutorials that are designed and they'll help solidify these concepts. Absolutely freaking tootly. So if you look at our news post, I'll just bring this up here. The way that our news posts are structured when I'm like, hey, this is what you can do this week is we start off like a ramp. We read the textbook and we watch the lectures and attend the tutorials that are typically for the previous week. So the tutorials are super important because they help solidify what you've done in the book, the videos, your practice, and um, any other um, practice problems throughout your solution. And then the following week, so once you've done kind of all of these items, the following week you will see the tutorials. So absolutely solidify. And as the student said, you can always come back and do more Pardon me, you can always come back and do more practice problems just to really solidify it. So awesome advice. All right, um, so follow the flow of the course. And, and really, it sounded like they were saying take ownership and supplement with practice problems um, because yeah, there are, are a number of them, practice problems. I would also say if you use all the practice problems and still want more, then we still have our study plan, which has been tailored for you. And this is within Wiley Plus. Okay. I am cognizant um, that we are getting a little bit longer on time and I'm just gonna wrap this up. Um, the last piece of advice is to prepare for the test. I made sure to do the practice problems and the tutorial questions during the test. I made sure I didn't spend too long on the multiple choice questions so that I'd have more time on the longer answers. Ooh, I also used 
paper and pen to write my answers before I typed them in and double checked everything. So I like that. Um, paper and pen, if, um, I really do like that because sometimes, yeah, we need to tactilely see how we do things. And especially if the student prepared that way, then it makes sense that you're gonna write that way and use all the tools available for you. So thank you so much. Um, for any of the other students that uh, didn't get back to me, if you still wanna share some tips and tricks, I will post them anonymously to the discussion board. And if not, that's okay too. Again, um, thank you uh, for considering or even thinking about it. And thank you to those students who did reply to my email after 5 p.m. on a Friday um, so I can record this on Sunday uh, so it can go live for you uh, tomorrow. All right, so going forward, no blame, no shame, stuff happens, but now you have a rhythm. Now you know, okay, every week there's an adaptive practice. Every week there's um, a chapter. Every week there's videos and stuff to read and tutorials. And every other week there's a mini test based on two chapters. Okay, we can do this. And if, I say going forward, going, going forward. If you have a bump, it's okay. The lowest mini test is dropped. The lowest to adaptive practice are dropped. And while many students have said in the past, I didn't want to have to drop my first one. It's a learning process. It's okay. And you're going to have a lot more marks as we progress throughout the term. And your best as my best, it looks different every day. And as long as we continuously show up and put in the work at the end of the term, the grades um, that you receive are typically not a surprise uh, to students. They tend to say, yep, that grade, uh, it reflects my overall uh, effort, my overall input, and my overall uh, results at the end of the course. All right, thank you so much, everybody, and I hope you enjoy this week's topics on week four. It's an accrual world out there. Take care.